Okay, I think that's good enough. One minute is uh, all we can spare. So I'll pass it over to Mark and he will kick things off. All right. Thanks, Aaron. So hello, everyone, and thank you all for uh, joining us today. And welcome to the OnScale Cloud CFD webinar hosted by our friends at Onshape here. Uh, today, you'll learn how to leverage the power of next generation CFD solvers running on cloud supercomputers to solve the toughest computational fluid dynamics challenges. Uh, I'm super excited today because the OnScale team officially launched our powerful uh, CFD capabilities in OnScale Sol, our multi-physics CAE cloud application. And uh, we believe this is a, a, a game changer for fluid dynamics engineers. Let me see if I can switch the slide here or Aaron. Yeah, there you go. So my name is Mark DiGorio. I'm the director of uh, growth, uh, which is marketing and customer success at OnScale. I'm here with Aaron Magnin, who is partner success manager at Onshape. And before uh, joining Onshape, Aaron uh, had more than a decade of experience designing and launching products as an application engineer and technical marketing manager. We also have Dave Freed on the line, who is our CTO at OnScale. Uh, Dave has 25 years in experience in CFDs, worked at So Systems under the Simulia brand, and he also worked at EXA, uh, software market leader for CFD. This is a two-part uh, webinar. So uh, first, Aaron is going to open up on, uh, on shape and prepare uh, this intake manifold for uh, CFD analysis. He'll then pass the model over to Dave, who will open the model live uh, with the changes that Aaron has made. Uh, we're all, of course, remote here, so there's no uh, passing files back and forth. This is all done through the cloud, and it's all live. Uh, Dave will then bring it up into the on scale and uh, add constraints, intake, pressure, uh, all the things for CFD analysis, and then run the actual study uh, uh, on our supercomputers. Uh, all of this, again, will be done live in Chrome browsers, which means essentially any engineer uh, is able to run these types of analysis today, right after this one. Uh, there are hundreds of applications for this technology. Um, and at the end of this webinar, we'll, we'll show you some other applications like ducts, pipes, um, heat exchangers, microfluid uh, devices. Uh, what you're looking at here is an FDA nozzle model commonly used for CFD validation to determine accuracy. Uh, you can see here the, the flow from high pressure to low pressure in this particular nozzle. Again, we'll, we'll look at other applications at the end of this uh, webinar. So with that, Let's get started with a live demonstration. I will hand it back over to you, Aaron, to, to get started. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about Onshape uh, as we prepare this model for this CFD um, that will be done in Onscale. So here we have a manifold, probably a pretty good example part for, for, for CFD. And before I send it over to the OnScale team, I need to do a couple little things. I want to enclose the fluid volume. I want to maybe make some additional design changes as it as it relates to the the simulation. And and then you know I'll send it over to to Dave who will actually do the simulation. So first thing I want to do is I want to close off these openings. So I'm going to just use a fill command and I'm just using my shortcut button there to, to enable me to get through this pretty quick because I think everyone here wants to see on scale mostly. Uh, <laughs> that said, uh, I could fill all three of these with three separate features, but also I could fill all of them with, with one selection. If I just use my create selection option, select the tangent edge and add that, that'll enable me to make a basically a surface that just closes off that other area of openings. Now at this point, um, I do want to turn the inside space into solid. So I'm going to actually use uh, enclose. And when I'm using this, I definitely like to select from down here to, to select the surfaces and the, the bodies. And when I do, you can start to see the actual material that will will be which will represent where the airflow is going to go through this manifold. 
I'll hit the checkbox and it looks all right, but I do know that um, Dave wants me to actually create like a little bit of a reservoir uh, on, on the aft end of this. So I'm gonna type, well, I'm gonna hit Shift S on my keyboard to just jump into a sketch real quick, select the face that I wanna sketch on and then maybe draw a little rectangle around these openings. Now, I'm not too concerned about the exact dimensions in this case. I just, you know, want to, to make this reservoir to enable us to kind of see this fluid flow fully develop. I'll hit the checkbox and then I'll hit Shift E to ex start to extrude out this, this region. And in this case, I want to pull it out just a little bit. Um, and, and like I say, I'm not too concerned about getting anything specific. I mean, if I wanted to round this off to something uh, we can use the the dialog here to input a value. But uh, I think that just about does it for the model setup. Like I say, I think this is more about seeing on scale in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this now with Dave. So I'm gonna just use our share button up here. Start typing, typing in his name here. There we, there we are, Dave Freed. I'm gonna give him edit abilities. You know, he can copy, export. Make sure to check these settings when you're actually sharing your models or, or collaborating with others. Once I hit share, um, David should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to close out of this dialog. Now I'm going to jump over to my GoToWebinar interface and make Dave the presenter. So just one moment. There we go. Dave, you should have control. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Can you hear me and see my screen? I can. Looking Excellent. good. All right. So I, um, I'm going to start out actually in Onshape because I want to go uh, take a look at this thing that Aaron made. Uh, so I'll go to shared with me and I can see it here. Let me open this guy and have a look-see. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, but Aaron, um, you know, I think we should extend this, uh, this inlet a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go into follow me mode here by double clicking on Aaron's icon and uh, work with me. While we do this, uh, yeah, so if you could extend that inlet out a little further, uh, that would be sure, great. Sure, no problem. Yeah, so Dave entered the the follow me um, collaborative option. So he's actually seeing kind of how I'm controlling it on his screen, which you'll see right now. If I if I click and hold, you can see that little hand icon. That's where my cursor is, and I'm, I'm sliding this back and forth. That's not actually Dave. Now, uh, Dave, I'll, I'll just use a quick, you know, move face command here to, to pull out this face. And do you have any, sort of idea of how far out I need to drag this out. That looks great, right where you're at. Okay, I'll go ahead and accept it as is, and I think that's it. Um, take it away. All right, yeah, save that for me, and um, I will- There's uh, no saving it on shape, come on. <laughs> exactly. All right, so uh, I am uh, logged in here to my account in OnScale Solve. And when you log in, this is the first thing you see is uh, the overview uh, page. Um, there's a projects page and simulations page where um, you can see what you've done. And if you're part of a team, there's a team page. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make a new project. Um, we'll call this webinar CFD demo. And I'll create my project. And um, the first thing I need to do is bring in some geometry. So I click this little import CAD icon and I could upload something from my computer, but of course, what I really wanna do is bring in something from Onshape. And uh, here is the model that Aaron was just working on. I can see he just finished up with it at 10.09 a.m. my time. So I will go ahead and select the part I want from here part one, and I can now see that this is the right thing and go ahead and import. So uh, there is some geometry analysis and pre-processing that happens while the model is being imported. So I'll just take a moment and uh, explain a little what um, Aaron was doing in his geometry pre-processing. So in CFD, um, you know, it's good to make sure that the boundary conditions where the flow is coming in and the flow is, is going out are sort of far away from the action. Um, so that reservoir that he attached to the outlets helps make sure that we don't have to put a uh, an outlet type of condition 
you know, too close to um, where the region of interest is. And likewise, um, that was why I asked him to move um, the inlet uh, a little bit further away. So um, I'll just confirm that this is the units I'm expecting, and it is. And so here's my model in on scale. And um, we have these quick guides over here on the right hand side, and it's letting me know that uh, the first thing I need to do is apply materials. So I'm in um, a tab called uh, Modeler, and these uh, icons up here kind of represent the progression that we're going to take as we set up our model and simulate it. We're going to start out in the Modeler where we um, manage anything to do with geometry and materials. Then we're going to apply physics. We're going to do some things in the simulator tab, and then we're going to view results. So the first thing I need to do is go to um, part one and assign a material. So I select the part, and then I can come over here to the materials menu, and we're going to uh, make this air. Um, but actually, I think I want to uh, modify um, the properties here. Um, I'm going to modify the dynamic viscosity uh, and make it lower to represent um, something more like hot air coming into this intake manifold, which would really be like a hot um, air, you know, mixture of air and fuel. So I'll save that and um, I think I'll re give this something a little, a little more meaningful in terms of the name. Okay, so I feel pretty good about uh, where I'm at here in Modeler, so I'm gonna move over to Physics. And uh, by default, uh, Mechanical Physics is turned on, and we could also turn on Thermal if we were doing a thermal problem. Uh, here I'd be doing Thermomechanical, but uh, today we're gonna do Fluids. So I turn on this Fluids Physics toggle, and um, what that does is give me uh, a couple of controls here. Uh, this is an area we call the physics toolbar. So in my physics toolbar, I've got a couple of um, boundary conditions. In Solve, we, we just call them loads. Uh, and I've got this fluid environment settings. Um, and so I'll now take you through what all of those do. And the quick guide here is telling me that I need to define a flow and a pressure. So let's start with the flow. So Usually you'd use a flow condition as an inlet, although you could also use it as an outlet. Um, and that's why we've called it flow and pressure because that's really the physics that's being applied. Um, since uh, either one can actually act as an inlet or an outlet. But here we're gonna have a flow inlet and we're gonna apply it here. Um, and so that brings up this property panel where I can provide settings for this um, boundary condition. I'm gonna set the velocity magnitude to 10 meters per second. And if I wanted to, I could change the direction. So you can see that um, I'm headed uh, you know, normal to the uh, surface here, but I can click on this little protractor and I can um, use these little handles to, to move, um, move this around. Let me see them in here. And, uh, adjust the, um, the angle if I really wanted to. Um, but, uh, but actually, um, I'm, I'm happy with it just uh, going straight in. I'm gonna make sure that, I'm gonna double check that by going into vector component mode um, that I've got what I want. Let's see here. Oh, actually, I do have a little bit of an angle that got set, so I'm going to straighten this back out. I want one, zero, zero, which will align me with the x-axis, as you can see here. And I'll click Done. And so I've got my flow condition. Um, I'll just look at that one more time, make sure that the arrow looks right. Yep, that looks okay. All right, great. So uh, next we're going to apply um, a pressure outlet. And um, I'm going to actually use these lateral sides of this reservoir box for my outlet. I, you know, I could probably use the back face or the top and bottom, um, but it works pretty well to just use these lateral sides. 
And um, this is really uh, gauge pressure. So this is relative to atmospheric pressure. Um, so I can just leave this at zero, which means I'm effectively at atmospheric pressure. I don't need to change this. You can see I've selected two faces on um, each of these lateral sides. You can see visually that those are selected. So that's it. I'm done with my pressure. And now I go to fluid environment, and you can see how they show up here in the tree. So now I'm going to go to the fluid environment and see what I need to do here. So the first thing is uh, duration, and this is the physical time simulated. So uh, the default value provided here is just some very short uh, amount of time that you might use for some sort of quick and dirty check to see that you know everything is set up correctly and do a, you know just a quick quick run. But um, I'll, I'll set this to be what I really think it should be. Uh, and and one one way to think about that is you know I've got a, a flow coming in at 10 meters per second, and it needs to travel probably the better part of a meter here. So uh, in order to achieve you know at least one full flow path, uh, I'm going to want you know one divided by 10 is about 0.1 seconds. So I'll set this to 0.1 seconds. Um, and the next setting I need to look at is characteristic length. So we have a little hover over description here. Characteristic length is used to set the mesh cell size. We recommend to use the hydraulic diameter of the inlet. Uh, so what's gonna happen is that uh, our automated meshing will uh, do the right thing if we have the characteristic length set appropriately. Um, now in the case of a round pipe like this, the hydraulic diameter is just the diameter of the pipe. And uh, it turns out that the default that was calculated here uh, actually is the correct um, diameter of, of this inlet pipe. And so I don't have to change this. 0.05 meters or 50 millimeters is a good value. Um, and let's go to this last setting, contraction area ratio. So the contraction area ratio is the ratio of the inlet area over the area of the smallest cross section of the model. So in this case, the inlet area is really the smallest cross section of the model. Um, so a contraction area ratio of one is what I want. I don't need to change it. Uh, if I were simulating something like a converging nozzle, um, then the smallest cross section of the model would certainly be uh, a lot smaller than the inlet, and I would need to use an appropriate contraction area ratio to represent that. And what that will do is, is set essentially the underlying numerical time step in an optimal way. Um, but for this case, I don't have to worry about it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click done. But um, before I move on to the simulator tab, uh, I just wanna show you what would happen if I had you know, forgotten to set a pressure outlet. So let me go ahead and remove that and try to go to the simulator tab. And you'll see um, I get a message, I get a little, warning icon and a message that says we found one error in your study uh, and I can click view list and it's telling me I have a part group that's not constrained. And if I click here it takes me back to modeler and it's telling me that this is the part group that's not constrained. Um, well I only have one part group, uh, I only have one part so uh, you know that's easy to, to, to deal with. If you had a lot of parts um, you know, it would be very useful to be taken directly to the part group where you need to apply the constraint, um, which is what was just done for me here. Uh, so let's go to physics. And what we mean by constraint is, um, you know, a load or boundary condition that um, ensures that, uh, you know, the simulation is well posed. Uh, so, you know, if I were to try to run this and all I have is an inlet and there's nowhere for the flow to go, um, you know that has no that has no uh, final solution, right? That would that would cause problems. So let me go ahead and put the appropriate um, pressure outlet back on. Click done, and now I can go to the simulator area, and everything looks fine. Uh, so the only thing for me to to do now is to mesh and estimate, and then I'll be able to um, to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Mesh and Estimate. Um, now, there are some other things that you can do uh, in terms of meshing. You can select the mesh quality that you want. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I, that's a topic for, for another webinar. 
uh, about how to use on-scale solve. Um, same principles apply to any simulation that you would be doing uh, in solve. Um, but let me just explain a little bit uh, while this is working on uh, analyzing the geometry and creating a, a, an optimal mesh. Um, the philosophy in solve is we're, we're really trying to uh, take the the burden of having to be a meshing expert or a numerical expert, you know, away from the user and uh, just take care of it automatically so you don't have to worry about it and think about it too much. Um, and we also have a step we call estimating. And estimating is uh, actually what it's just moved on to now. The estimation is really helpful because it tells you the, the cost and the time of the simulation study that you are about to run so that you can decide if you really want to run it or if you should change your, your input parameters, change your setup in some way to reduce the cost or you know, um, reduce the amount of time it's going to take. Okay, so my estimation process is finished and you can see I get this, um, this slider here. And what this is doing is giving me the ability to control the trade-off between the cost and the time. So if I run this on the smallest possible cluster, um, it's going to cost 3.15 core hours and require about an hour and a half. Um, and as I move this slider to the right, uh, I reduce the time by running on a larger cluster, but uh, it costs more because we don't have perfectly linear scalability. So I'm going to move this all the way to the right, and um, I'm happy to pay the you know uh, extra core hours here, six core hours instead of three, in order to have this done in about 18 minutes. So now I will uh, click run, and the simulation is running. Uh, so I'll get some progress updates, and eventually I'll have the opportunity to load the results. Um, but I'm not going to make uh, everybody wait for that. So let me go back to my dashboard, and I'm going to go to um, a project and a study in that project that uh, already has some results that I can just load up quickly. So here's my CFD demo results, and I've got a study here, and I can click on that little icon to load the results, and here are my results. So, um, so now we are in the results section, and uh, Right now we're looking at velocity and it's zero everywhere on the outside because um, velocity is physically required to be zero at the walls. So we're gonna have to slice into this um, uh, model in order to really see anything. So we wanna slice in the Y dimension. Y is kind of into the page here. So um, let's go ahead and do that. I wanna get about halfway through that inlet Looks like I've got it about right there. And um, I can see uh, some velocity. And I'll just note that right now I'm looking at the first time step. So we'll we'll go through and look at the rest of the time steps in a moment. Um, but first I want to do some uh, slicing in Z. And then you can kind of see into this uh, these outlet pipes and get kind of a nice view here. Um, and now I can just click this little play button and it will uh, walk through the, um, the 10 time frames that I have uh, in the results for this simulation. So um, my red went away because I, uh, my, my velocity scale goes all the way up to about 21 meters per second because there were some very high uh, velocities uh, kind of in this inlet pipe right at the beginning. So let me go ahead and adjust the legend and make it a little more appropriate. Um, so here you can see that once this is sort of converged, um, the maximum velocities are a little bit more like 12 or 13 meters per second, which is what we'd expect since the inlet was uh, exactly 10 meters per second. And um, I'll go ahead and play this again. So what we see right away is that um, our intake manifold uh, is not really distributing the flow as uniformly as we would have liked. Um, there's a lot of flow reaching uh, this outer pipe, 
um, not enough flow reaching the, this inner pipe and the middle pipe is uh, sort of in between those two. So I'm really not uh, actually thrilled with this design and I'd need to think about some ways uh, to improve it. Um, you know, maybe I could put a little, a little baffle uh, here or modify the shape of this inlet pipe so that more of the flow is sort of directed you know, upwards sooner. Um, there could be a fair amount of design work involved in order to uh, you know, really get a good uniform flow here. Uh, and to, to look at that a little more closely, actually, we can um, spin this around and slice a little differently. So I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to now slice this way until I can actually see what's coming out of the pipes very clearly. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good view. And um, and now you can see that uh, you know I really have um, a lot more flow uh, coming out of this outer pipe than um, you know than this inner pipe, and even the the one in the middle is really really not getting a lot of flow. So that is that is uh, not what we want. And you can see that very clearly here. Um, here I'll run through the time steps again. You can kind of see the different. Um, Flow patterns, uh, since we're looking here at instantaneous velocity, um, you get an idea of kind of how, you know, how chaotic and turbulent the flow actually is. Um, and uh, we can also look at average velocity. So I'll switch to average velocity and you can see now, here we are at the final time step and um, it did look like it was pretty well converged, you know, those last several time steps. Um, look about the same, and uh, yeah, clearly, you know, um, we, don't, we do not have an ideal flow distribution here. Uh, you can also look at um, you can also look at vorticity. So vorticity is kind of nice to look at. It gives you a sense of the um, you know sort of turbulence and um, chaoticness of what's happening in the simulation. So I'll go back to the um, the slices I had before, and um, we can look at uh, kind of how the vorticity evolves with time, and really kind of gives you a sense of you know there there really is a lot of turbulence going on uh, in the simulation, which you wouldn't see if you were uh, just looking at the average qu quantities. And uh, one more um, metric that I like to look at sometimes when I'm interested to kind of see where the turbulence is developing and where it's going is called a Q criterion. And Q criteria, I do need to um, sort of set the legend appropriately because uh, I really want the min and max to be at about the same level. So I'm going to set this to around one times 10 to the minus six uh, for both the min and the max. And again, this is um, kind of a representation, a little bit, it uses the, uh, the vorticity, but it's a little bit more of a precise representation of um, turbulence than just plain vorticity. Uh, it's a calculation that really kind of isolates the, um, the development of turbulence, turbulent structures. So as we play through this, you can kind of see how the turbulent structures um, evolve and, and move through the system. Uh, if we were to do a high frame rate, you know, if I had a 100 frames here instead of 10, uh, I could make a very lovely movie out of watching um, the uh, evolution of the vortex uh, vortices and, and turbulent structures using Q criterion. So, um, so that's really about all I all I had to show you uh, today. Just wanted to, to to sort of wrap up the formal part of the webinar by showing a few of the um, you know types of applications that this initial release of CFD in Solve would be suitable for. Um, it's targeted at internal flow applications. Um, as you saw, you know we use the um, the negative volume. Uh, of the model uh, as the fluid region um, 
And so, you know, uh, there's a number of, of applications that uh, work well that way. Um, it's not intended yet at this point for external flows. So flows around bluff bodies, you know, aerodynamics. Um, that will be coming in a future release. Uh, but yeah, some of the things that you can do uh, with this release today uh, are looking at flow distribution and electronics and closures, um, you know, ducted systems like ceiling ducts and, and HVAC ducts, uh, heat exchangers, um, and uh, cardiovascular flows and other types of biomedical flows. Um, this FDA nozzle is kind of a, a validation benchmark used to represent those types of flow situations and different kinds of um, microfluidics. Um, this is a microfluidic Tesla valve that we simulated in the uh, in the movie shown here. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll turn my webcam off in a second, but I just wanted to uh, say goodbye and thank everybody for for attending and hope I was able to answer the questions um, satisfactorily. And and any other questions, of course, you know, we will be thrilled to um, to answer and and engage with um, with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for joining and. Um, Thank you for all the, the great questions. Um, yeah, so very, very simple, of course. You just go straight over to onscale.com, sign up. Sign up right now. As Dave mentioned, we we are giving uh, 40 core hours for free. So you can sort of, you get a lot of simulations uh, with that uh, number of core hours. And very simple registration and then validate the registration and you're off and running. You can also uh, you can also go through, of course, the on shape uh, app store. So we're we're listed there, of course. And uh, we also just released a new training course in the on shape learning center. So uh, you can uh, go off and get uh, certified for on scale solve. So we'll call on number that, ways to, to read. We should share a link to the learning center and uh, make sure everyone can can get in there and start learning it right away. Absolutely. Anyway, I think I think that just about does it. Uh, we'll include the link to the learning center and the registration page, et cetera, um, for anyone interested in, in learning more about OnScale and giving it a shot. Thanks again for making time out of your day to, to come join us and hope, hope everyone learned something new today.